Hi, my name's Kevin Hicks. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The History Squad. Now, today's film is my stories from my time as a medieval bowman at Warwick Castle in England. I was there for well over a decade, and boy, did I have some interesting times. A lot of fun. Uh, the audience were always great. They wanted to listen about Agincourt and all that kind of stuff. And one day, I was presented with a, a tiny little teddy bear, a little Robin Hood archer bear. And I was, oh, that's really kind. Thank you very much. And then the next show, somebody says, shoot the bear. Bet you can't hit the bear. You'll never hit the bear. Well, I was challenged. So we stuck the bear on an arrow on the target and I shot it several times. And people in the audience were upset. He shot the teddy bear. So other people gathered up the little teddy bear and they took it away. And the last show of the day, I'm shooting away when I saw people coming and it was the medieval reenactor. So I lowered my bow and they come onto the shooting ground of mine right at the front of the castle with a little bear on a stretcher. He had a patch over one eye where an arrow had hit him. His arm was in a sling. His leg was all bandaged up and he had a crutch and he was presented back to me as Archer Bear. And everybody's going, oh great, because other people had seen me shoot it. And I, oh, thank you very much, this is great, thanks. And I shot away there and finished the show. And when I'd finished, a little girl come up and she says, uh, can I look after the little Archer Bear? I went, yeah, of course you can. And I gave it to her. Somewhere in this world is a woman who's probably grown up now, a young girl who's all grown up now, in possession of Archer Bear. I hope he's okay. But I used to get to the castle early. I've mentioned this in another film, I think. I just used to love to get to the castle, let the security guard had let me in, and I'd just either walk around the grounds or walk around the castle just breathing it in. It was wonderful. Um, one snowy morning, I'm just leaning on the bridge at the back of the castle over the River Avon, and there is a stag drinking from the water. Just wow. And this one day I'm, I've decided, I've got it cleared, everybody knows what I'm doing, I'm gonna shoot over the top of Guy's Tower and over the curtain wall to practice to see if I can land the arrows in the courtyard so I can then talk about it. And we went into the security guard, the house security guard, and I said to him, look, this is what we're gonna be doing as arranged. He says, yeah, great, no problems, Kev. I said, now listen, don't come out. Watch them through the window. Don't come into the courtyard when you see the arrows because you could be killed. All right, he says, I understand. No problems, eh? So then I go on the outside and the outside um, security guard is with me and I said, are we all right? And he says, yeah. And he was actually in radio communications with the other guy. So, hey, no problems. I shoot a few, I think a four or five arrows over the curtain wall. No problems. I could see they were dropping quite nicely, but the challenge was going to be to clear Guy's Tower. I can't remember how tall it was. It's enormous. And I shot 40 arrows over it and I thoroughly enjoyed myself. And I could tell by the arc, they were all going pretty much into the same place. But both myself and the outside security guard wanted to rush around to see where the arrows had landed. And sure enough, they had landed in a tight grouping. The only problem was, in the middle of the arrows was the security guard from the house. He'd come out to see where all the arrows were. There were arrows actually in between his legs, over his shins, actually brushing his uniform. And he couldn't speak. I said to him, I said, what on earth are you doing? And he's going, Ugh. So we sat him down. A cup of tea was served. We are English after all. What on earth were you doing? And he said, I wanted to come and see the arrows. I said, well, you saw them. He says, funny enough, I didn't see them coming. As soon as the first arrow struck, he simply froze. How on earth I didn't kill that man, I do not know. But other stories. So I'm on stage. I've done my shoot. I'm telling people about the Battle of Agincourt. And I draw my trusty medieval blade. I've had this for years. And I hold it up and I was just in one of those moods because there was a very, very large audience there and a coach party of American tourists. And these Americans had been lovely. I'd been chatting to them. One of the ladies had already uh, 
questioned how a horse shot the arrow it was this group yeah and uh, I picked up and I thought I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a bit of fun I picked up my sword and I held it aloft and I says good people gathered here this sword has been in my family for over 2,000 years and you could hear the British people going oh yeah 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 and I noticed that this particular group of visitors were listening to every word so I thought I'm gonna play them this sword of mine was found sticking up out of a stone in a forest near Tintagel in Cornwall. It's been in my family ever since, handed down father to son. And I put the sword away and you can hear people cynically giggling until this lady simply shrieked out, Oh my God, he doesn't know. He's got Excalibur. Her poor husband shrieked as he simply walked away covering his eyes. The stories go on. The last one I'm going to give you is my flag, the Cross of St George. This is actually off Warwick Castle, a gift. Tattered and torn, flying in the wind it had been, and given to Kevin as a memento. Well, the one day I'm at the front of the castle, I'm shooting away, this was practice. I think I was in between shows and I've got my Cross of St. George on and uh, this family came past and I looked at them and, and I thought to myself, that they look like the Clampets. And I, I just said, hi, they were really nice. There was no problems at all until the boy. He says, what's that flag on your chest there? And I says, oh, this is the Cross of St. George. This is the flag of the English. Shoot, he said. I thought your flag was the lumberjack flag. And I, I says, no. I says, that's the union flag. I says, that's different. And I kept myself calm. Yeah, I wasn't going to get into an argument with this chap. He was obviously a bit in awe of the castle. And uh, as he walked on, he came back. He says, is that a first aid station on top of that tower there? I says, no. I said, I've told you. That's the flag of the English. And he again, shoot, I thought your flag was that lumberjack flag. And he was being mean. So I stepped over the barrier and I walked towards him when a very fine dressed gentleman stopped me. He says, please sir, may I have a word? And this family, the Clampets as I nicknamed them, carried on. And I says to him, are you with them? He says, oh yes, indeed I am. He's very well spoken, he's very well dressed, and he says, please don't hit me, and please don't hit him. I says, who are you? He says, I'm their carer, their bodyguard. I says, you're joking? He says, no, there is a story to tell. I follow them all the way around, apologizing to people all over Britain and Ireland. And he says, the fact is, grandma won the lottery, millions, and she sent her family on holiday abroad. I am paid quite handsomely to look after them. So please don't hit them. Don't hit me. By the way, when they get back, they're in for a surprise. Grandma will have moved away. So these stories, yeah, I must have a hundred of them buried deep in my mind, but there's one very special story from Warwick Castle. And I'm going to finish the Warwick Castle stories on this. I've just done a show. I'd done my shooting and, and you know, the Agincourt, that kind of thing. And everybody was going, great, I'm just about to go and pick my arrows at the target. And this lady come over to me, she said, excuse me, my son here, there's a little boy there, he'd like to say hello. And when I looked down, I realized this boy was completely blind. He'd been born without any eyes. And I, Yes, of, of course. Now, my mother is registered blind, so I have a, an understanding, I suppose. And she says, could he see your sword? So I drew my weapons and I let this boy handle them. And then he said, can I see you? By this time, I was on my knees in front of him. He examined me. Best show I ever did, that's for sure. Well, I hope you enjoyed my stories, that film from Warwick Castle. Uh, if you did, 
like, share, and subscribe, please do. And don't forget, turn on the uh, notifications, the all notifications buttons, because we've got so many different kinds of films coming down the line. But before I go, I've got to give a big thank you to a couple of my Patreons there, the people who keep me going on these films. It's fantastic. Sandra Teeling and Dan DeLench. Fantastic, guys. Thank you so much. Bye for now.